Colin still appears on that Pure Pilates website. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, his his picture and his bio is on there. And he's yeah. he has changed his name. It, it is now Dylan Thomas. Um, yeah. I wonder if that's, I don't think it is. I think he had changed the name before the marriage. So, yes. correct. I, right. So, he's now Dylan Thomas, which for those who don't, is also a famously Irish poet. Was he an Irish yeah, what a way to make yourself unsearchable, right? To find <laughs> to pick a name of Dylan Thomas. So sneaky. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's entertain the people out there with Pure Pilates website. Obviously, this business does not care that they are hiring and giving business to someone who is one of the number one suspects in the murder right. of Robert One. Look here, Pure Pilates is now offering a tower class for men. Pilates was developed by a man, Joseph Pilates, and was taught as a strict conditioning regime to the German army during World War I. Okay, so here he is down here. Dylan Thomas, instructor. Dylan Thomas is a former bookworm who discovered the joy of Pilates and never looked back. Although he is still working to build his elusive powerhouse, he can now sit up straight roll like a ball, hang like a squirrel, and perform a great variety of movements that make him feel strong, alive, grounded, and present. Well, isn't that wonderful? Also a licensed massage therapist, Dylan meets, a lot, meets lots of people who experience daily aches, as well as chronic pain and stress. He knows Pilates can help, and that's why he became a teacher. One of the things about Dylan, Craig and I have talked about this, before and during the trial, the reputation of uh, Dylan was sort of as this cosmic waif, just sort of drifting through life. A smart, very intellectually curious person. He, uh, Georgetown School of uh, Foreign Service. Then he uh, moves to China, opens a publishing house, uh, the House of the Tiger Ant. Then he comes back, he kind of gets bored with that. Now he's gonna be a, a chef and goes to the Culinary Institute of America. Then he gets bored with that. Now he goes to Simmons College to get a master's degree in children's literature. Then he moves to Washington, uh, begins a relationship with Joe Price, starts working at Equality Virginia. Um, uh, he really bounced around. He never really focused on a job since he, he became a massage therapist, I think, after the murder and the trial. Since that time, Dylan Ward, Dylan Thomas has settled down and stayed with one career for the past 17 years. And I think that's, you know, what finally made him settle down and not, you know, be the, the wave drifting through life. I'd love to know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, people were wondering how did these guys afford such expensive attorneys? Well, Dylan's father is a very renowned cardiologist in Tacoma, Washington, Needham, Needham Ward. Mm -hmm. So he might still be working. I googled him recently. It doesn't seem like he's retired. So it seems like daddy was the one that funded all of these hobbies with Dylan jumping around yes. from different schools and, you know, going to culinary school, massage school in Thailand after Robert was killed. You know, just, yeah, he, he just seems like your typical spoiled rich kid that couldn't find his way and probably had a drug problem and depression or who knows what other mental health issues. Right. Right. Well, we wondered about, you know, how they footed the legal bills because that defense did not come cheap. You know, Joe was a partner at a firm. He might have salted some money away. V Victor, we heard his parents mortgaged their house mm -hmm. and mortgaged pretty much everything to pay for his legal defense. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea. Yeah, I, I, I don't recall who we heard that from. And again, it was 15 some odd years ago, 12 years ago, but uh, we would see you know, Victor's parents in the uh, gallery of the courtroom every uh, during every session, hmm. an older every couple. Day. Um, and, every status uh, hearing, the, every day. 
just looking ashen, of course. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, um, in terms of Dylan's parents, when I watched a documentary, I was kind of surprised to hear that Dylan's mother got up there on the stand and was testifying in, def in, in her son's defense and claiming that she had taken away that knife that prosecutors suspected was the actual murder weapon. So, um, yeah, maybe I did hear that, but it was so long ago, it was interesting to refresh my memory about these things. And I, I think that's that sounds like BS to me, because why would you take away part of someone's culinary kit if you were going to send it to them as a gift? As a gift? Yes, yeah, especially that was his gift was right. a culinary arts Three. kit. A, a, a gift to somebody who graduated from the Culinary Institute of America. I'll pull out one knife, keep it in Tacoma, Washington. Of the many elements of this case and investigation that did not pass the smell test, Diane Ward was responsible for one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. and, and then she herself doesn't have the knife. She then never produced the knife oh okay well even worse yeah i mean it just sounded like such bs i'm like why would anyone like give somebody a gift and take away one third of the utensils that are in this expensive cooking knife kit so know? one thing we had heard during that when diane was getting to go on prepared to go on the stand was that in every defense you know uh case that oh that the girlfriend, the wife, the sister, the daughter, the mother, one of them will always get on and come to the defense of, you know, the son, the daughter, the son, the husband, the brother. Uh, and that was the case here. Mm -hmm. uh, she got up there and uh, told a whopper. Yeah. She actually told a whopper. Yeah, totally shameless. And once shameless. again, another factor that makes you just shake your head as to how did the judge, how did Judge Leibovitz come up with deciding that these guys were not guilty? Right. You know, like you, you just have to just have blinders on basically, especially um, they talked about how the defense had made a motion to keep out all those sex toys and the judge granted the defense motion yet you know, that seemed to tie in to the motive. You know, this was the prosecution theory that the motive was to sexually assault Robert, which resulted in his being stabbed. But yet she wanted to keep out all that evidence of all the, the arrow stack and all the torture devices, the s and toys. So that, that just made me mad hearing about it all over again because I had almost forgotten about that too. All right. I yeah. forgot that part too, that... Right. I the, forgot. I, I guess her concern where it would prejudice the jury or prejudice the defendants, whatever her reasoning was. Um, very curious. Very curious. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if the government's going to maintain that Robert was restrained in some way by lack of defensive wounds, uh, whether physically restrained or through drugs. And um, yeah, that's uh, I was reminded of that whole legal skirmish as well in the weeks leading up to the trial as they were going back and forth on what evidence, what what testimony could be uh, was going to be allowed in. 